Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to four player game, My City, designed by Reiner Knizia and published by Cosmos, who helped sponsor this video. In front of you is lush green grasslands, a flowing river, forests, and all the room you would need to make a flourishing city. And this is a legacy game. That means that each time you play, permanent changes will be made, not just to your city, but also to the cities of the other players, so that with each passing game, what you build will be unique to you. And once you finish the 24 unique games that make up the campaign, you'll also be able to continue playing My City indefinitely in its included non-legacy format, which you can also play right from the beginning if you want. In this video, we're going to start with the legacy version, so join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, each player takes one of these double-sided game boards. We'll be setting up a game with two players, so we'll return the rest to the box. Make sure your board is on the side with an animal showing here. This will be your board to use for all 24 games that make up a full legacy campaign. So personalize it by writing a name for your city in this area here. Then collect one of these scoring tokens and put it on the 10 space of this victory point track. Each player now collects their 24 playing pieces, and you can identify your pieces because on their backs, they'll have your animal symbol. You'll keep them with their building side face up, though, while playing. There are three types of buildings. Residential, which are yellow, red, public buildings, and industrial, which are blue. The buildings you have will be the exact same as the other players, and you can now return any tiles for the player boards that aren't being used back to the box. These are the construction cards, and there's one for each of the 24 building tiles in the game. Shuffle them, and then place them into a face-down deck in the middle of the play area. And that's the setup. Well, mostly. As I mentioned, My City is a legacy game, and it takes place over 24 individual games known as episodes. And each episode introduces new rules, objectives, and even components for the players. Now, all these extra items are stored in eight envelopes, and each one of these contains the items for three of the episodes. So here, I have the one labeled The New Land, and it says in the corner, episodes one to three. Do not open any envelopes until you're instructed, and we'll not spoil any of the secrets in the later envelopes in this video, but since for your first game, you will need to open this one up, we can do that right now. Here you'll find an overview table and it will explain how scoring and rewards are assigned for each of the episodes in that envelope. So for your first game, you'll only pay attention to these ones here and we'll learn how this works a little bit later. Now you may also get some stickers and other items and again, we'll talk about those in a bit. But most importantly though, you get a rule sheet with the unique rules for each of the episodes in that envelope. And this will also provide some tips and tricks for players explaining what they're trying to do. And we'll go over all of that in this video. It is recommended that you play in My City with the same group of people throughout all 24 of its episodes. But if you have a new player swapping in for someone else, they can just pick up where the player they are replacing left off. Now, although there are special rules introduced in each episode, there are general rules that you'll follow for every game. For example, each game is made up of a series of rounds. So let's go back to the table and we'll see how one of those rounds works. To begin a round, flip over the top card of the construction deck, and then each player finds the matching tile in their personal supply. So in this case, everyone finds this piece. Now each player puts that piece on their board anywhere they like at the same time. The rules say there shouldn't be any delay or waiting around, but of course, you'll take a few moments to decide where you want to put your piece. The important thing is that when everyone is ready, they add them to their boards at the same time. Now, there are a few rules you have to follow when placing a tile, so let's go back to the table and we'll see how that works. First of all, buildings can be placed in any orientation as long as they fit within the bordered squares. However, they cannot be flipped over. This side must be face up. Also, they can't overlap any of these solid mountain or solid forest spaces, but you can put them on top of the trees or on top of rocks like this. You should avoid covering trees if you can help it because visible trees are worth points at the end of the game, whereas visible rocks will cost you points. So do cover these up if you can. 
You'll notice that some spaces have squares in their center. You don't have to worry about those right now. They'll come into play later, but you can cover them up as well. Now all that said, the first piece that you place during an episode must be put alongside the river. Now to be considered along the river, at least one square width of the tile must be fully touching it. So this would be legal, and this would work as well, but you couldn't do this because now only a corner of the tile is touching the river. You also can never place a piece that crosses both sides of the river like this. But it's okay if the edge of the piece is covering up some portion of the river like we see here. Once everyone has placed their piece, you then flip over the next card, find that matching piece and put it on your board as well. Each new tile you add must have at least one of its square's sides bordering along another tile that you had already placed. So this would be legal, and so would this, but this wouldn't be, because again, only their corners are touching. Also, buildings still count as touching on a side, even if the river goes between them like this, so I could put the piece over here. I should probably also mention that you can't place buildings on top of other buildings, and once a tile has been set in place, you can't choose to move it later. That said, if a player cannot or does not want to place the indicated piece on their board, they're allowed to pass. They just announce this out loud as other players are adding their piece to the board, and instead, they'll place theirs face down in front of themselves, and then they lose a point on their scoring track. You're reminded of this penalty here, where it tells you that the penalty for passing and not constructing a building is minus one point. And the term immediately here is a reminder that this is a scoring effect that happens while playing, not at the end of the game, like these other scoring factors, which we'll look at later. Anytime you lose a point, move your token backwards on the track like this. Now, if a player was already at zero, then they cannot choose to pass because they can't lose any more points. And in that case, if they can't or don't want to place the current tile, they instead end their participation in the episode. In fact, after any construction card is turned over, any player, instead of placing a tile or choosing to pass, can decide to end their participation, even if they could have placed the related tile. They just announce out loud that they're done and then they turn that related tile over. Players who end their participation will no longer place tiles in future rounds. They're basically done for that game. But any other players who haven't opted out will still continue to place tiles and draw new cards. Also, when you decide to stop participating like this, you don't lose a point. You only lose a point when you pass on placing a tile, but still want to continue taking turns afterwards. Now that said, an episode will end either once all of the players have chosen to stop participating, or if all of the construction cards have been flipped over. In either of those cases, it's time to calculate everyone's final scores. You'll do this using this sheet from the envelope for that episode. But remember, this first scoring rule is a penalty that you receive during the episode when you choose to pass but want to stay in the episode. However, you don't suffer any additional penalties for any remaining buildings you didn't construct during the episode. Now, though, we'll look at these end game scoring rules. And this first one says that we gain one point for every tree that's visible and then lose one point for every rock that's visible. In this layout, we have one, two, three spaces showing two trees each. So that will give me six points. However, there's also two spaces showing two rocks each. So now I lose four points. Then it says here that you lose one point for every light green empty space. Now this doesn't include any spaces with mountains or rocks, trees or forests. So that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 empty light green spaces. So that means I lose 10 points, bringing me to a final total of one point. An important thing to understand is that you must always add and subtract your points following this exact printed order during the scoring. And if you would ever go below zero, Keep track of those negative points as you'll need to deduct them from any positive ones you would later gain during that same scoring. If your token ever hits 50 during scoring, it will just stay there even if you would gain or lose other points. You're now locked in at 50. And this symbol here means that you gain one progress. 
Progress is tracked by these rows of circles here at the top of your board, and as you gain progress, you'll fill in the circles from left to right with a pen, starting with the top row. Once all the points have been calculated using this criteria, it's now time to assess the episode, and you'll use the symbols here for your episode to do that. Whoever came in first, that is, whoever has the most points, now gains two progress as shown here, so they would fill in two circles on their board. Then this symbol means that they add a double rock sticker to the board from the sheet that came in the envelope. Unless otherwise stated, new stickers must be added to light green spaces that have a small square in their center. And you can move pieces that you have on the board out of the way if you want to put them underneath where a piece was sitting. You can also feel free to just clear the whole board to make it easier to see all your options. So those are the rewards for the player with the most points. But if there's a tie for first place or any other reward position, the player with the fewest empty green spaces in their top row wins. So in this case, this player has one empty green space. If those tied players had the same number of empty green spaces in the first row, then they would check the second row and so on until the tie was broken. Continuing with the rewards, the player with the second most points gains one progress circle, but no stickers. And then everyone else receives no progress stickers, but they do get to take a sticker showing a single tree and add it to their board. Now, if you have just two players in your game, like we set up here, then no one will ever get the second place reward. Instead, the player who came in last will get the reward listed as other. With the rewards given out, the episode ends, and each player now clears the tiles off their board and resets their scoring token to the 10 position, ready to start the next episode. With that in mind, I thought we would go over the next two episodes just so you can see the kind of variety you can expect as the game continues, especially since this information is all revealed once you've opened that first envelope. In episode two, as explained here at the top, all of the rules from episode one still apply, along with the previous scoring conditions, but now you have a new way to score points as indicated here. This says that you will now also get points equal to the number of buildings, that is, tiles, in the largest group of each color. A group are any pieces of the same color that have at least one full side of a square touching, but you can have just a group of one piece. Here's a group of one red building, there's another one, but here's a group of two red buildings, and then my largest group of red buildings is right here, and there's a total of three, so this would give me three extra points. This is the largest group of blue, and it gives me one, two, three, four more points. And then there's a group of six yellow pieces here for six more points. Then using the player's final total scores, once again, you assess the episode. And as you can see, episode two's rewards are the same as episode one. Now in episode three, all of the rules from episode one and two apply, but this time, as shown here, at the very beginning of the rewards section, you're told that each player receives one of these well stickers. And again, you do this at the beginning of the episode. The rewards below are then assessed at the end of the episode. You add your well sticker to any light green space with a white square that is not directly adjacent to the river. In addition to the previous scoring rules from episode one and two, you now get four extra points if you can place four different buildings adjacent to the well, no matter what color they are. For example, this arrangement would get you that four bonus points, but this wouldn't because although the well is surrounded, this is only three buildings and it has to be four. Also, you can cover the well if you want to, but then you won't be able to score those extra points from it. In the assessment rewards for episode three, you'll see that anyone who ranks as other will get to add another well to their board. But keep in mind, wells do not count as buildings themselves, so it does not help to put a well directly next to another well. Once you've finished episode three, you're ready to go on to episode four, which is found in the next envelope. But that and all the other envelopes I'll leave for you to discover on your own. I'll also mention that My City comes with rules that they call the Eternal Game. 
and this will use the other side of the boards and some rules that you won't fully discover until you've played through the first 10 episodes. So I'm not going to go over these rules here to avoid spoilers, but using that other side of the board and these rules means that you can continue to play My City over and over again. You are not limited to the 24 games that make up the legacy version. But otherwise, that's how you play My City. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.